Good morning. So we're working on uh, the monitor. And uh, where we're at with the application is that we're creating the next reducer uh, since we're implementing NGRX uh, um, store, or also known as Redux. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. The first thing that I need to do is look here under my core, because this is where I've added my reducers. And we need to add in a new reducer here called client applications. Okay. And so we'll do that by adding a new, we'll just actually duplicate what we already have here for my projects. And we're going to call this client applications. Okay, and so now in here, we're going to change projects to be client application. Same thing with the lowercase version. And then the uppercase version. So there's our actions for this. And for our set, we pass them in. For our added, our modify, we pass one in. And for our delete, we're only passing in the identifier. OK, that looks right. So now in our projects, we want to do, or in our reducer, we want to do the same thing here. Like that. And then also, we want to do capital projects. OK, so this should be done now. And this should be our new reducer. And so what I can do is I can add that into my index file here. Okay, as soon as I do that, this is now starting to tell me that I have circular error references in this. So on my app uh, reducer, we're going to leave this. And I'm going to do this as an export new state. Can I do this as a function called new state? like that. Okay, and then in client reducers, we should be able to do import new state from app reducer. Like that.
And then the same thing in the projects reducer. I don't like that I can't import these actions is my issue right now. So it was as soon as I added this one, right? So it says it's actions. Okay, I almost got it all done now. Now there's one in client applications.reducer.ts. Did I just get it? I think I got it. Okay, let's go ahead and check the app now. There, we can see it load. And projects load successfully, and it's sorting. Okay, one thing I wanted to do was on my projects reducer, here we want to do an add project new state dot is equal to add project new state dot order or sort, which is an A and a B. And then to do this, we're going to say if A is greater than B, then it's going to be a one. Otherwise, it's going to be a minus one. So now if I come over here and I create a new one for A, it adds it to the front, and if I create a new one here for G, it didn't add it to the front, did it? It's like completely reordering them once it does that. So we want to do this by the project name.
Try logging in again. Go to projects, create one here called EGE. Not quite. Well, we'll leave it like that for now. Um, and so now that I have my client application uh, reducer, we're going to add it in here as client applications as a for feature and call it my client applications reducer. And that should be all I need to get it going. So the first place that I want to look is in my shared for my component dashboard and we want to look at the projects dashboard. And we're going to go ahead and do this new call here, but it's not going to be through the web hub anymore. This is going to be through the HTTP service called HTTP service that we created. And then when we do this, we're going to dispatch here my store action for set client applications of my client applications. Okay, that's done. So this is now a request client applications. And we need to do that for my this.project.id. And that's it. And this one comes from this dot client application service is equal to, and we need to bring in my private store called store of app state and this is going to be a this.store.select client applications and we want to subscribe on this We want to make sure that we unsubscribe on this one. And now all I want to do is I want to say this dot client applications. And we can say this dot loading equals false. And I'm going to say if this client applications like that, then what we know is that we're going to set that to 
client applications dot filter x where my project ID is equal to this dot project dot ID. And that's it. So in your request, you're dispatching here your set. And then in my component module, my feature module for projects, I have the service here. We haven't done these ones yet, but I think we should. So if we look at projects, we're subscribing it to the store here. We're requesting the projects there, and then we're dispatching the delete. So when it binds a client application, we're going to add this delete client application and this is now going to be a it's under actions so we want to say import everything as actions from core index subscription onto the store and then on your init you want to do a this.http which is a private HTTP which is an HTTP service and we want to request my client applications of my project ID And that should be it. So let's go ahead and take a look now. And this time we're going to look at this project and add on a client. It says that this filter can't work. So I want to say if my client applications and my client applications dot length is greater than zero. says status 500 when it was trying to get them.
right here, client applications 256. Okay, so here it is. Just like that. Okay, we'll give it a try. Five hundred on the projects, it says. Ah, that was weird. Okay, my project ID. And here's my DTOs, which is zero, 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 zero. So what I can do is go back up to the projects controller and I can say if my projects dot length count length is greater than zero. We can do a console dot right line. Hello? Try it again. Now, I think we might even be able to get rid of this. But so this is only getting the client applications from this one project. which means that in this reducer, when we look at new state, we should be getting all of them. This one's got seven projects with it. Reload that. This is the one with one. 
plant one. So why is it failing here? Rerun the transaction, it's been deadlocked. So what that sounds like is that my unit of work isn't working right. Because it's opening this connection for each one of these asynchronous calls, so it's deadlocking. So if I was to look at this again, when you look at your unit of work commit, we're reopening this transaction here, but nothing's been put there yet. We'll also have this dispose that you can do. So this one we could say bool open new transaction. We're going to say following commit open new transaction. Otherwise our transaction is going to be null. Same thing like that. Now there's going to be a few errors because of this. So this one's now going to be a bool follow opening new transaction. Which we can change up here to be a bool and a bool. Let's go ahead and rebuild it now. This is going to fail and tell me I have signature problems. Okay, we got to fix these errors now. 
So this is in my alerts controller. So if you commit this, you don't want to open a new one. And this one you do, and this one you don't. Okay, so we're going to not open this one, not open this one. We will roll that back and open it, and then this one we're not gonna open a new one. Okay, on the alert one, when we create it, we're not gonna open a new one. We're not gonna create a new one. We will here, and we're not going, we are not going to here. Same thing here. And then this is the last one. Okay, this one is in my client's applications controller. Same with this one. Same with this one. Now, we don't need these anymore. We have this put. Okay. This is our last controller here that we have to do. few more. Like that. Okay, this is our web hub. Here you want to do a data access layer dot rollback, which is a true. And then here you want to do an await data access layer dot commit, which is false. OK, 
And this is where we check the token, create our log. If we commit everything, then we're good. Otherwise, we're not. Hey, this is on our TCP server. This is going to be a true. This one's going to be a false. But this is supposed to be a transient, right? So we can get rid of this. And we do want to have up here the mapper. And so now when you're doing this, you can do this as a using var data access layer equals new service data access layer of my mapper. like that. So up here you want to have a service instance DTO called service instance and then a service DTO called service. And this one's going to be a using var data access layer equals new service data access layer of my mapper. And then this is going to be data access layer dot create. We're going to commit it, which is going to be a true. And then it should dispose it. One concern I had was looking at this user service TCP. We can get rid of this service and pass in here iMapper. Like that. And then this you can use a var data access layer equals a new service data access layer of my mapper. And then this is my data access layer. And then you want to do a await data access layer dot commit async, which is a false. No dispose, or there is one, but with nothing on it.
Okay, just a few more here. This is in my tests. So we've got one there. And that's where all these rests are coming from. service, read service, delete service, Delete project asynchronous, create project asynchronous, read application user, update application user, read projects. Read service instances, create a log API. Create a log test. Create a service instance. Update a service instance. Read a project. Update a user. Oh, that's a commit test. Ten more. Read client application, create client application, create user up connection. One more there. Read client application is going to be false. Update client application is false. And now we'll go ahead and rebuild it. And in this one, we can do a add client application new state equals a add client application new state dot sort of A to B. And we want to say that this is my If my A is less than B, then we want to do a return one. Otherwise, we want to do a return zero. OK, this is good. We can give this a run now. We'll log in.
I didn't ever see it try to get projects here. Deadlocked. So let me look up here, damper C sharp deadlock. So what that means is, is on my unit of work, and that you're always opening this connection and beginning a transaction. But if I look at my service data access layer and I get rid of my unit of work and I get rid of my connection string and now I do this as a using var connection equals new SQL connection of my globals dot connection string then this should automatically kill it. We don't have a transaction anymore. Like that. So we're going to rinse and repeat this for each of them. connection with no transaction. Okay. 
No unit of work. No transaction. Connection is small. And our delete here. Okay, a few more. Really annoying that we were getting deadlock issues. That's a big problem. This should fix it though. If I look real quick at my Dapper documentation, Yeah, you don't have to do anything to open it. Okay, this one. Okay. On the create user connection. Okay, this one is just going to be the connection with no transaction. We can get rid of the counter. Here's the update. Okay, I think one thing we can do is for this document, we can just replace all of this with this one. And then you can also do your, that one. And the only thing left to do is to fix all of these connections now. Okay, this one here is my read project singular. Who else is talking on the stream? It's just me. Only I am. <laughs> okay. This project here is going to be with this connection.
And we'll just add it in right there. Okay. Next is this project one. We're about halfway through these things. And this one we can get rid of these alter statements. Same thing here with the update. Same thing with the delete. this box welcome back it's good to see you again have you used innumerable I async innumerable of generic type T I've noticed I ended up typing task a, a decent more amount oh so you can actually just use an I async innumerable of type T that's interesting no I didn't know about that It's new. You yield the results and they stream as they come through. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, but that's just only on the web APIs, I'm assuming, for controller functions. Like, I wouldn't be using that on anything here in my data access layer, I don't think, right? Read client asynchronous. Read client applications by OAuth token. Create a client. Update this client. No, I wouldn't imagine it being useful in the data access layer. I haven't used it either. I just found out about it today. Um, one thing I have to look at my uh, controller methods is I know they have a lot of those different um, return objects. Uh, I need to implement some kind of paging on this app, and uh, I don't want to necessarily do it from scrap. I'm hoping that there's something built in. Paging where I mean like I don't want to query the entire database and then select 10 records. I just want to query the next 100 records when it hits the web API. So asynchronous server side loading. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as you're describing this. This is for alerts. Creating an alert.
we're almost done here. Create alert here. Okay. Hey there, Rye Five One Zero NG. Can we see some gameplay? I'm working on a web app at the moment, um, and it's not buildable until I finish this little chunk. But you can check out There Is No Turning Back, which is on Android, free to play, and then it's like a dollar and a half or two bucks on Steam Store. Um, and that came out uh, in October of last year on Android, and then uh, on Steam the year before that. There is no turning back. Okay. Um, Updating the alert here. And then deleting the alert. This is for reading the services. This is for reading one service. This is for creating a service. And then updating it. And then you have a delete one. And then all we have left are just a few more. We don't have a rollback function anymore. We don't have a commit function anymore. On my error log, I can get rid of a bunch of this stuff like that and bring in the new connection. Same thing on this one. Like that. Okay, and then Can we see, did it not do too good? It did fine. My game took two, four years and done awful, so I know how it feels. Uh, no, the game came out, in my opinion, of pretty high quality. I don't have a lot of marketing behind it, so it's just gotta be one of those things that uh, becomes a, um, as people discover it. So grassroots networking kind of thing. But four years is a long time to spend on a project. Okay, we can get rid of this counter. We've got this update here. Create service instance here. Yep, four years, probably mine picks up two eventually. What, what's the game about? Tell me about your game.
Okay, that's it, except for these three methods here in the middle, which we missed. Okay, that's done. So now we got a few more errors to fix. This says that we don't need our commit async and rollback functions anymore. Which means that now I can get rid of these commits that I added in here. This should go pretty quick. done. Okay, that's done. Just a few more here. Okay, a few more. Almost done. It's an old school beat em up game with plenty of collectibles, upgrades, and free party DLC. It's about two hours long and has hand drawn animations, Steam achievements. It was built in a very gold game, game engine with an old programming language, too, but it's probably the biggest it's kind of out there, apart from randomly generated ones. It made it solo, and I'm bad at programming, so that's why it took so long. Nah, you finished the product. That's half of the battle, man. Most, I mean, a lot of times projects don't get finished. You know what I'm saying? So ending up with a deliverable is key in my opinion.
20 left. All right, let's give this a try now. We'll run all of our tests. Okay, they're running. Everything passed except for the rollback test. So we can actually trash this one. And just run this one test. Perfect. Now we can start everything up, and now theoretically we shouldn't have any more deadlocking issues. So now we'll go to projects and we'll create one. We'll call this project one. Then we'll create another one here called Alpha. And then we'll create one here called Zulu. So underneath this Alpha one, I'm going to create a client application called Client App One. And we'll reload it. Okay, this time when I get my DTOs, that all looked right. So now it's working, but it's not quite populating on here. So let's go over now to my shared dashboard for client applications. This one is passing in one application. So we actually want to be on projects dashboard. And so this is very interesting because it's saying What kind of auth am I using? JWT Identity Server 4? Yeah, I'm using IS4. Okay, so something's not working here on my 
reducer module, client applications, set client applications, because you are only getting the client applications for that project. So here we're going to say const something or other equals this and then we want to console.log the ASD ASD and then we want to return it. So when I'm in the reducer It does look like it's only ever adding one. which means where this is being picked up in your shared component. This needs to be client applications. lowercase. There is no more application user on that. And that worked. Okay, and so on my client applications now, let's go ahead and make sure that everything is working on both of them. So we need to go to the features module under client applications here, and it's lowercase. And when I look at my app shared client application dashboard, I'm going to comment that out for now.
So now when I look here at my projects, you're getting your client applications from HTTP, you're filling them up. Cannot read property ID of undefined. How can that be undefined? So this one's getting the project from your project service. Which then gets passed through project ID to be ID. So here you want to say if your project exists, then you want to set it.
So when you go to projects, you're requesting them, you don't need that. So then when you're looking at one project, we'll do a console.log here of my client applications. which is one. Okay, we'll try that. It says it couldn't find any. where your project ID is there. So if I look at my DTO here, for our client application, you do have a project ID Project ID does exist. Now it says that it can't add it. So my project ID here is 277. but it says that it's null. But project ID should have already been in here. So I need, do I need to move this to the on init? Two seventy seven. Two seventy seven. Why did that not work?
Because they're different types? Weird. Yeah, now it seems to be working right. And we can get rid of this stuff. And that's for our store. And here's your delete client application. And then when you're looking at a client application, when you save it, this one, we're going to move this to be a this.store.dispatch. And up here, we're going to say a import everything from act oh, as actions from core index. And then we need to have my store, which is a private store, which is a store of type app state. And so this is going to be a new actions called like that. And we want to make this of the reducers.index. And this is going to be update or modify client application of your client application. And then for the create, you're going to do this dot dispatch, sorry, this dot store dot dispatch new action called create actions dot create. It's called add client application of your client application. Now, when you reset your client application,
we're going to do a this dot store dot dispatch a new actions where it's a modify client application of your client application. And now on your project service, when you have your Git client application, I think we're going to do a this dot store dot select my client applications. And you want to subscribe to this as a client application called iClient Application Array. And then what you want to do is you want to say, you're going to say const client app locations equals client applications dot filter and you want to get the one where your ID is equal to this dot ID. And so now, if we've received our client application, then we can set these properties. And then and there it is. So that was loaded without that worked. You can see that everything is working correctly now, and we're only querying the server that first load. Hey there, Miyako99. How are you doing today? So you no longer need this get client application any longer. And same with this get project. because we have to do this project one next. So let's go ahead and add in, we already have the store. So we're gonna do a, whoops, before I forget, over on the, um, this one, we need to have a client applications subscription. Right here.
And then down here on ng on destroy, you want to do a unsubscribe. That looks right. So back over here, this is no longer a Git project. It's going to be a project subscription. And so we're going to say this dot project subscription is equal to this dot store dot subscribe to my client. Sorry, it's a dot select my client applications dot subscribe my client applications here like this. And then we want to say this dot project description dot on like that. I don't see where route subscription was being used. Oh, up here. So when this is done, oh, I want to get this from project as a project, call it an I project. And I want to do this. And then I want to get my project, which is const project, oops, and that's going to be equal to my projects.filter of the one where my ID is equal to this dot ID of the first one. And if that's the case, then we want to assign my properties to it. Like that. And we also need to do our actions. Because When we do this actions here, this is going to be my modify project. And if it was a create, then we just get rid of all that. And that's it. Back in here, when we reload it. Everything is now not loaded from the server except for that very first time. The client applications are done. Not read property undefined of client application component. So 
So we're going to say if this dot client exists, then we want to get rid of this. We also want to have another one for my route subscription. Okay, you are subscribing your events here. Just making sure I'm happy with everything. Okay, and then the next one is this one. We have a route. This is where we uh, subscribe our events. Where are we requesting alerts? Okay, so now for the alert, alerts, we're going to pull this one off. And what this one was currently doing was you're requerying your alerts from down here. Which you're getting from your project service. So let's first go into WebHub and scrap out my get alerts response. We also want to do that over here. Let me get rid of that. And so now on my alerts component, We want to add in my store here. And when I look at my store, I want to add on here a number of these alerts. So here, we're going to need to have a new subscription here called a alert subscription.
we're gonna say this dot alert subscription is equal to this dot store dot select my alerts. We want to subscribe my alerts here as I alert array like that. And then we also want to have the ng on destroy where we do the this dot alerts dot unsubscribe. And so now what you want to do is you want to say this dot loading equals false. And if my alerts exist, then what you want to do is alerts is going to be equal to your alerts dot filter. And you want to get the ones where your client application type equals this dot client application ID. And then here you want to set your sort, your paginator, your data, like that. Okay. This we can just do a value for this. And then we can scrap out these and probably this global service. And so when we do my delete, this is going to be a this.store.dispatch, and it's a new actions of, and we want to add in here my import everything from as actions from my core reducers index. And this is going to be a remove or delete alert. And so at this point, we need to go create our next reducer. So we'll use this project reducer again. And I'm going to change this one to be a alerts actions and a alerts reducer. And we can just do this as a project project and then project except for you meant to do it for alerts like that. So that's done. And now in your reducer, we're going to do the same thing. And this needs to be for my client name.
And so in this reducer, we're going to change everything that is a project to be a alert. A project to be an alert. And a project to be an alert. And we want to put this as a timestamp. Like that. So now in my reducers module, we can add one in here for alerts, call it alerts reducer, and add that in here. Try to serve that again. Okay, it says on my client applications dashboard. We can get rid of this one and this one and this one. So let's just call this alert subscription. I want to get this from my private HTTP, no, private store called a store of app state. And this is going to be equal to a this dot store dot select alerts and we want to subscribe my alerts to be I alert array and then we're going to say this dot loading equals false and if we have alerts then we want to do a I want to say this dot alerts is equal to alerts dot filter x where my x dot client application ID is equal to my this dot client application dot ID. And we'll move this to be in the Annette. which is a alert subscription here. Now, if I look at my projects dashboard, I am requesting my clients here. So we want to have the private HTTP service called HTTP service in here. And I'm going to do this as a 
HTTP dot. And now we need to add that function in. And so for that, we can go to my project service and pull it out. You also want to have an update alert, which is a request called an I alert update request. Which needs to pass back an observable of my I alert. Bring this up to the other service. And we'll call it request alerts. It doesn't return anything because we're going to do it with a subscription. We need to have one here for my client application subscription and one for my alerts description. Subscription. And then we also want to have one of these for the other two. Like that. And then we'll do is this.store.dispatch a new actions called set alerts of my alerts. So for this update alert, we're going to put a I alert here to my alerts like that. And my update request We want to say that it has in it a ID, a status type, an alert type, a message, and a timestamp. And now when I look at this side, we do have one for an alert update request, which has just those, but no timestamp. Like that. So back in our component, here, this is our assignment. This is where we request them. This is where we destroy them. If I look at the web hub, we can get rid of these now.
No, because we want these. Okay. Okay. And that should be happening from here, and it is. Let's go ahead and stop this and rerun it. This one needs to be a delete alert, which is a delete alert, which is a um, ID. And then we want to have this little bit of text that I saved. Okay, and now it says in my alert component, this doesn't exist, so we'll just comment it out for now because this is, I think, the last component we have. So let's make sure that my alerts is working. And it is. Okay, and now you can see that it does in fact retrieve them. We need to add a few. Let's finish this up here. So on my alert component, I no longer need these types. I want to have a new subscription here called a route subscription, which goes right here. And then I want to add in here a store of app state and so here it's going to be this dot and we want to add in one here called the alert subscription alert subscription And then we also want to have a on destroy. Okay. And this one isn't a for sure. So we're only going to do this 
if my alert subscription exists. And now it's going to be my this dot alert subscription is equal to this dot and it's my um, store and we want to select my alerts and subscribe to my alerts array. This dot loading equals false. We can do a this dot loading equals true. And if we have alerts and it's not null, then what I want to do is a const alert equals my alerts dot filter x where my ID is equal to my this dot alert dot ID. This dot ID of the first one. And now I want to say if my alert does not equal to null, so if it exists, then we're going to go ahead and assign all of these things. And let's go ahead and add one more up here, which will be a That's okay. Like that. We don't want to have a save button on this. And we also want these all to be disabled. Okay, and this one's going to be for my alert type, alert type, alert type, and then alert type. We can get rid of this one and just add on here a disabled. And then this one it's going to be for a status type and then when I look at these we want these to be strings say that these are for the values. And so to test it, we're going to add in a client here.
And I was hoping that that was going to kick all the way over here. Okay. There's 170 connections in there. If we reload it, we can see them here. And I was expecting that this client application screen would have just worked. Oh, you're in client application singular. You did set all of that. And here you're passing in your ID. If your ID is greater than zero, which it is here. So here we're going to do a console.log of my alerts. But your project. weird your projects dashboard you have this on your constructor like that There we go. And they are populating here. Oh, it's this dot alerts. And there they are. You can see my values for them, but nothing I can do to remove them. Status 403, that's an okay, isn't it? So if I look at where I'm doing my delete, It's sending the wrong token for that delete. So 
So that means this needs to be an authorized tag. Four hundred three is unauthorized. Yeah, yeah. I was using the wrong token. And I think with that, that finishes up our NGRX. Okay, it's failing. It says 500 error. Because this is different now. We need to do this as a get application user asynchronous here. And so now we need to have this one and this one again, and this is with a long for my application user ID, and same thing here. Like that. And then like this. So if I look at my data access layer, get rid of that one and that one. So now we have this create alert, update alert, which is a long application user ID. And the same thing here. And now this is going to be a read client application asynchronous of my alert dot, it's called entity dot alert client application ID and your application user ID. Same thing here which is read client application. And then here, you're gonna go do this for your entity.client application ID, and then your application user ID. like that. And now this is application user dot ID. And same thing over here. Let's go ahead and run it. launch it and now I should be able to go and look at one of these alerts and delete it and now I can and it's successful what it didn't do was update 
this model for my client applications. So in the delete, When you issue this delete, you also want to change one of your values, right? So if I go back into my alerts, where I do the delete, I'm also wanna wanna have here a client application which is an iClient application. And we want to say client applications subscription. And in here we'll unsubscribe it. And so up here you want to do a this dot client subscription equals this dot store dot select my client applications. And we want to subscribe my client applications, just one of them. And we want to get the one where we want to say If we have them, then I want to say my this.client application equals client applications.filter my x where my x.id is equal to this.client application ID of the first one. Because then you're also going to do a this dot client application dot Where are you getting that? Oh, it's on projects. So we're going to move this because this was on the wrong class. And what we want is on client applications when we have one that we delete. This is where you want to do that.
Now instead of doing that, can't you just pass your whole project here? like that. And then where this is called here, I'm just going to pass in the whole project now. Is there much involved making your API documented with Swagger and .NET Core Web APIs? No, it's pretty straightforward, actually. Let me give you a tutorial on it. Um, and it uh, it's really awesome because it auto-scaffolds your application to find all of your different methods. Okay, this is on client applications component. So this is project.id. And here it is. So if I was to submit an OAuth token here, four hundred. was weird. And then in project component, we want to say if this dot project subscription exists, then we want to do this. Okay, see how it says there's two client applications? That's weird. There we go. So let's go ahead and add some more of these things, messages. So 
So it logged it. If I look at what's happening to the signal R connection, We are connected. This is called a create alert response. Create alert response has a subject here. But what I actually want to do is change this to have a private store called the store of my app state. And now we can say that we want to import my everything from actions, which is from my reducers index. And this is going to be a new actions dot add alert called it alert and then this one's going to be a this.store.dispatch new actions.modify alert and then this last one here is going to be a this.store.dispatch a new actions called delete alert And that should be it. It says on my client applications component on 67, I have the wrong one. Something wacky's going on here. There we go. That's what was happening was that we were getting held up there. There's our projects. Here are our warnings. If I issue a T 
CCP call out. And we do a, oops, can't do that twice, that breaks it. Try it again. We're going to sign in with this TCP client in our web app. We'll set our token. Now I'm going to send an alert as a warning, which will be online warning message. And there it is. And it propagates immediately to the screen. Oh, all right. Well, I got to go get some lunch. Thank you guys for staying with me this morning. If you have any questions, make sure you pop them into the chat. Uh, that's at our Discord, discord.pixelhorrorstudios.com. I also put all these videos up at youtube.pixelhorrorstudios.com. Appreciate you guys staying with me today. So now um, our... Redux NGRX uh, store is all implemented all the way throughout our app um, as far as we've taken the app. So I think the next thing that we need to do is make sure that our WebSocket servers are up and running and then we can just put in some uh, some some um, uh, content onto the site so that we can actually get something out and pushed. I know I also want to make it so that the messages, once you see them or you click on them, that they get noted that they've been viewed. Um, so we got to have a little bit more work. But again, make sure you check us out at discord.pixelhorrorstudios.com and youtube.pixelhorrorstudios.com. And I'll see you guys a little bit later. Have a great rest of your morning. Bye.